Now z squared is also dimension 2 because z squared is dimension minus 2. This also works because t is of dimension 2, the derivative goes of dimension 1, and 1 over z is of dimension uh, dimension. Okay? So everything that we have on the right hand side must be of dimension 4. Now uh, the first question I, I ask is, could you have something like, some, for instance, 1 over z to the 6 times something? But if you had something like 1 over z to the 6 times something, it would have to be an operator of negative dimension. So that net dimension had up to 4. We will prove at the next class of the class after that, that in any unitary quantum field theory, okay, any unitary conformity theory, probably more. And in any unitary conformal field theory, there is no operator of dimension less than zero. No local operator of dimension less than zero. Moreover, there is a unique operator whose dimension is zero, and that is the identity of it. Okay? We will prove this at the next class of the class after that. So that's the view at the moment that we're dealing with a unitary quantum thing. Okay. It may be possible to prove what I'm saying more generally, but anyway, let's 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 Put in the assumption of unitarity, at least. Okay, then that tells us that the maximal singularity in this operator product expansion is 1 over z to the 4. Right? Moreover, the coefficient of 1 over z to the 4 has to be the identity of it. And therefore must be a pure number. So whatever the pure number is, let's call it c by 2. So we've got c by 2 z. Okay? Now, we could have something in principle which is z cube, and then we've got 2 z of z by z squared and plus d of z. Now, the next thing we, we, we do is to realize that, uh, you see, the statement that we're making should be translationally there. So I, I talked about t of z, t of z, but I can change coordinates such that this point becomes zero and then this point will become minus z. Now remember that for bosonic operators in the path integral, there's no difference between a, b, and b, a because the operators are given a particular order, maybe time order, when it's inside a path integral. Okay? So putting these two statements of mine together, what have we concluded? We've concluded that uh, <coughs> that this expression, the t of z, <coughs> t of zero, must be equal to t of zero, t of minus z. That's translation headings. Shifted origin, which must, which inside of the path of the table, same thing as t of minus z, t of zero. Okay? So, this function, the function that appears on the right hand side, must be an even function. Now you're thinking, my god, how can that be? Because we've got one over z. Okay. Well, there is. Uh, right, 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 right. Okay, so let's, let's, let's see this uh, as carefully as we can. Uh, okay, actually, we should have had. Uh, oh, that is del t at uh, z equal to zero. zero. Yeah, this is at zero, and this is at zero. Um, right. So see, suppose we done it the other way around. Suppose we done it the other way around. What would we have got? We would have got t of zero, t of. Uh, Okay, so let's let's say this. You see, let's 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 take this. Okay, I, I, I was a little glib and a little incorrect about one thing I said because you see, we did distinguish in this expression. We have evaluated the operator at the at the position at which we have the zero. Okay, so let me say more clearly what the right thing. You know what what we can say. Okay. Suppose we flip these two things, then 
the, the answer must change, but I must do all my evaluations. So, so if, I, if I make a translation shift, what do I get? I get t of 0, t of minus a, uh, a, t, a t of uh, uh, minus z is equal to uh, <coughs> uh, t of 0, t of minus z is equal to 2t of minus z divided by z squared. Okay, so let's just work with the terms that we know about first. Plus del t of minus z divided by z plus plus plus. Okay? Now, let us take this, this business and... Uh, no, what is it? Divided by minus. No, no, no. Just okay. zero minus minus z. Uh, just, 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 just. Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. That's what it's out currently. Uh, what, what is the general rule? The rule is we put. Okay, let's let me do it with z and w to become clear. Okay. So let's put this as w. This is z minus w the whole thing squared. This is z minus w. This is w. This is w. Okay. So that is that is uh, generally true. Um, okay. Now, uh, what I want to say is that this must be the same thing with z and w flipped. Because the left hand side is in there this time. So this must also be equal to t two t of z over uh, w minus z the whole thing squared plus del t uh, of z over w minus z. z. <laughs> okay. Now, you see, the difference between del t at z and del t at w is a term that is of order w minus z. Multiplying the 1 over w minus z will give you a regular term. Which we've not kept track of. Yeah, so this difference is not, not important. Okay? However, this difference is. Because if we take a series expand this, we, at first order, we get a singular term which will modify this. Ah. Okay? So let's work that out. So this is equal to 2t at w plus z minus w into del t at w. Overall. <coughs> okay? And then we've got a W minus Z the whole thing squared. And we should add to this plus del T at Z to make just del T W. Well, over W minus Z. Now this is not the same. Uh, this is not the same as this because this sign is different from that. But we've also got this thing, which appears with a factor of 2. And when added, this flips its sign. <coughs> you see this? Okay, so our consistency check works for the terms we can be taken. But you see the way it worked. The, when there was an order term in the operator product expansion, it flips a sign under W goes to minus Z, you know, W goes to Z, because Z, Z minus W goes to W minus Z. But a term higher up in the expansion, Kicks in to compensate for that. Now, we, we know that there, is, there could be a term with z to the 4, but this, they can, I'm claiming that there's no possible z cube. Why is that? Under z goes to minus w, the z goes to w, the z cube term will flip sign, but because the coefficient of this is not an operator, it's identity. This is unaffected and cannot compensate for any change. Okay? So, from the requirement that this, the, left, the left hand side and therefore the right hand side is invariant under z goes to w, it rules out any z. Okay? 
Therefore, we conclude that the most general singular part of the operator product expansion of the stress tensor with itself is T of Z, T of W, <coughs> C by 2 over Z minus W to the fourth plus 2T Z, uh, um, it should be given, W, then minus W squared plus del T of W. So, from general principles, we have determined all the singular terms in the operator product expansion of the stress tensor with itself up to one unknown constant, namely C. This constant C is very important. It has a name, it's called the central charge of the conformity of the theory. And we will see in the next class that it's, uh, well, we will, we will see in the next class and as we continue in our study of string theory, that the central charge is crucial quantity defining the property of the string theory. But I think we should stop here. So let's put that camera off and how do you do it, do you think, Mike? Red button. Oops. Oh, this one.